Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 12. And in this segment, we're going to be introducing the concept of the thermal wind and sort of what that physically represents in the atmosphere. So we're gonna take a bit of a change of pace from what we were introduced in the previous segment where we talked about trajectories and streamlines. Here we're going to be talking about something that's completely different. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the thermal wind. So one of the first things that I want to point out and sort of emphasize is this term thermal wind is actually a bit of a misnomer. The thermal wind is not an actual physical wind in the atmosphere. It's not something that we can directly observe by any sort of instrumentation. It's just a, it's sort of a concept that we use to relate the vertical wind shear that's present in the atmosphere with a horizontal temperature gradient. And we'll sort of explore what exactly we mean by that uh, as we go through the course of this segment. And just to sort of put that on the screen, and since we're relating wind shear to horizontal temperature gradient, probably a more proper term for this concept would be thermal wind shear. But thermal wind has just been used for so long that it's pretty much become accepted nomenclature, even though the term itself is a bit of a misnomer. But uh, we'll talk about we'll talk a little bit more about what we mean by the thermal wind shear as we actually uh, take a look at a diagram. But uh, just to sort of start off with thermal wind it's thermal quote-unquote wind it's not really it's not an actual wind that you can observe in the atmosphere it's more of a concept that is related to the wind itself which might seem kind of odd but that's just the way things are sometimes and this is also something that we'll explore in greater depth later on but if you've got no vertical wind shear then you've got no horizontal temperature gradient so and we'll talk more about that what we talk more about that in some uh, in some later lectures when we get into the idea of a bare tropic atmosphere but uh, just to sort of introduce the concept right now if you've got no vertical wind shear then you have no tem horizontal temperature gradient by this concept of the thermal wind so let's take a look at what this actually looks like in the atmosphere so if we take a look at the sort of a vertical cross section here so Let's say that as I go up the screen, I'm going uh, vertically upward in the atmosphere. And as I go from left to right, I'm going from west to east. And as I go into the screen and out of the screen, from into the screen would be going north and out of the screen would be uh, coming, uh, we'd be moving south. So let's take a look at this isobar down here, which is a perfectly flat isobar. So I've also got two other points marked up here, but I want to focus on this bottom isobar for now. As we move in the horizontal direction on this perfectly flat isobar, you'll see as I go in the horizontal direction, my pressure is not changing in the horizontal direction. So that means I have no horizontal pressure gradient, which means the pressure gradient force along this isobar or along this horizontal line, the pressure gradient force is zero, which means if we're thinking about geostrophic wind, if the pressure gradient force is zero, the Coriolis force is zero, therefore I have to have zero wind. There's no wind there. So the wind here, the wind along this horizontal line is just zero. Now if we go to this middle point here, you'll notice that this isobar is a little bit slanted. And in order for there to be continuity here, that means as I go from this isobar to this isobar, my pressure has got to be decreasing from 900 millibars to 700 millibars as I go from this isobar to this isobar up here. Now if I go in the perfectly horizontal direction again, you'll notice as I go in this horizontal direction, I'm deviating from this 700 millibar isobar, which means I'm going towards higher pressures. In order for there to be continuity here, the pressure is going to go from 900 to 700 millibars as we go from this line to this line. So if I start deviating to the right of the 700 millibar line, that means I've got to go towards higher pressures, towards 900 millibars. And if I go in the other horizontal direction, now I'm deviating uh, oh, towards lower pressure. So as I go in this direction, I'm going towards lower pressures uh, because, again, for there to be continuity here, the pressure's got to, from this line to this line, has got to decrease from 700 to 500 millibars. So as I go in this horizontal direction, I'm going towards lower pressures. So I got higher pressure over here, lower pressure over here. So I've got a pressure gradient force at points from east to west, and uh, also a Coriolis force that points in the opposite direction. Now, if I go to this top one, this top line here with this point, as I go in the horizontal direction, my deviation from this 500 millibar is much more significant than it is at 700 millibar. So if I go the same distance, notice I don't get very far away from the 700 millibar contour, but up here, as I go the same distance, I do get a lot farther away from the 500 millibar contour. And this would then imply that as I go in this horizontal direction, I'm going towards 
higher pressures going like this, I'm going towards higher pressures going like this much faster than if I go uh, in this horizontal direction from this point. So since this deviation up here happens much faster, my deviation from this uh, 500 millibar isobar happens much faster up here, that means the pressure, horizontal pressure gradient is therefore stronger than it is with a an isobaric surface that's not as sloped. So that as I go in the horizontal direction, the deviation is not as pronounced as it is up here when I go in the horizontal direction like this. So that would then imply that my pressure gradient force is much stronger up here than it is down here. So just a sort of visual representation of that. So stronger pressure gradient force at this particular point, weaker pressure gradient force at this point, and then zero pressure gradient force down here. And if we remember our definition of geostrophic balance, that is a Coriolis force that is balancing out the pressure gradient force, then that means my Coriolis force has to point like this. And if my pressure gradient force is getting stronger with height, that means the magnitude of the Coriolis force must also be getting stronger with height. But we also remember from our definition of Coriolis force, if we have a stronger Coriolis force, then we must also have a stronger wind. So that means as we go up, as we go up towards stronger pressure gradient force and stronger Coriolis force, as we go up, our wind must also be intensifying. And this, in fact, would imply that we have some sort of vertical wind shear. That means as we're going in the vertical direction, our wind is changing uh, speed and or direction as we go up in the atmosphere, as we increase our height or even decrease our height. So geostrophic wind is zero here, then it gets a little bit stronger, and then gets even stronger as we go up towards this particular point on the 500 millibar surface. So here we have vertical. So here we establish that we have vertical wind shear. However, if you look over here on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll notice that these isobars are spaced pretty far, pretty far apart. And over here on the left-hand side, the isobars are much closer together. And you may remember remember from the hypsometric equation that uh, if you have isobars that are spaced farther apart, then that means the temperature in between those isobars is relatively warm. So since these isobars are relatively far apart, that means I've got warmer air over here throughout the entire layer, and over here I've got colder air. If I've got warmer air over here and colder air over here, as I go in the horizontal direction, that implies that I have a horizontal temperature gradient. And that's this is the whole idea behind the thermal wind. It tells us that if we have vertical wind shear, that is winds that are changing with height, that implies that there's some sort of horizontal temperature gradient present in the atmosphere. And we've sort of illustrated that in this diagram. Here we establish that as we go up, our geostrophic wind is changing, and as we go in the horizontal direction, our temperature is changing. So we have a horizontal temperature gradient that is uh, present more or less due to the fact that we have this geostrophic wind, uh, geostrophic wind shear with height. So that's going to do it for this first look at uh, what uh, thermal wind physically represents. And in the next segment, we're going to get into the mathematics of that, since we like mathematics so much. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.